everybody, it's Eugene Lishua here. Welcome to Click 3D. This is the program where we talk about photogrammetry and how you can use a digital camera and some software to make some really compelling 3D models. Today I thought what we would try is a model of a trolley here. And um, this is a little bit of a complex shape only because there's some really fine details in here. But what I really want to do today is not so much focus on the trolley as I do want to show you a technique called masking. And masking is really useful, especially when you have objects that you want to ignore in your photos. So there's a few examples of this. One would be if I'm going to be taking pictures of this trolley on a turntable, I don't want to capture the background. I don't want to capture the turntable or things that are off, uh, way off in the background. And so masking will help us do that. Another reason would be, let's say for example, you're using a drone and you're flying on a roadway and maybe there's people and vehicles which are uh, going to be moving around. Well, in that case, um, you want to get rid of the people and the cars, so masking will help you to do that. And there's different techniques uh, when using masking. Some are manual, so you can do it externally in another program, and, but a lot of photogrammetry software will have a masking feature included in their software. And so there's manual techniques, there's semi-automated and automated uh, techniques. So I'll show you some of those today, not all, um, but let's first talk about uh, the subject. That's the first thing I do whenever I begin a photogrammetry project. And so this is small. It's in my control, meaning that I can hold it, I can pick it up, I can easily move it around. Now today, I want to be able to capture the whole thing. So I want to create a 3D model of the top and of the bottom here, okay? So it's not just I can put this on a turntable and take photos going all the way around. I actually am going to need to flip this somehow, either upside down or sideways, a couple of ways, and then capture the bottom. And when I do that, I'll be able to reconstruct the entire model. Now, uh, the other thing is that, as I said before, this has got some really fine details on it, so I may need to take some additional photographs. I'm just gonna try it with, um, you know, sort of my first set of photographs and see what I get, and if I need to, I may go back and then take some additional photographs. I'm not really interested so much in the model as I am in the masking, and that's something that I will be showing you. Um, otherwise, it's a pretty good texture. It's not too shiny. Uh, it is, you know, I can see that there are some uh, shiny things here in the lights um, that are showing up. But, you know, this particular model is not too bad. It's fairly flat. Um, it's made out of some kind of metal and, and some plastic as well. But, you know, a quite, quite a, a decent model to work with, an easy one um, to work with. So that's what we're going to start with. And I've got a bunch of lights that are around me and um, I'm just trying to sort of cut some of the, the shadows and make sure that it's well lit. So I've got one, two, three, I've got four lights that are just kind of spread out. These are just LED lights you can pick up at the local um, you know, hardware store or whatever, nothing too, too expensive. Actually, two of the lights are uh, uh, LEDs that I just picked up on Amazon. They're like 50 watt outdoor lights, uh, but they have a nice uh, bright white light. And because I can move them around and I can do some different things there, um, you know, I can help to avoid any strong shadows on this thing. I also have some overhead lights and some uh, uh, track lighting here so I can you know point lights if I need to but I'm not going to get too too fussy with the lighting today like I said the purpose is going to be masking so let's talk about my setup and the turntable and then taking photographs so when thinking about what I'm going to do with this part um, there's one thing about it it's longer than it is wide and so what that means is uh, I'm planning to use a turntable. Now it's not absolutely necessary because I could just put this on a table here and just kind of move it by hand, but a turntable will make it a little bit easier in some cases. So I'll try the turntable uh, with this particular uh, model. Now um, one thing that I always try to do whenever I photograph an object is I try to get close. And I've seen a lot of people when they'll take photographs of something, it's like they're really far back. So the object makes up a very, very small piece of the overall image. And there's no reason to do that. In fact, I'll often get so close, I'll try to cut off parts of the image. It, it doesn't cause a problem so long as that you have enough overlap between the images. So I may leave a little bit more um, 
uh, background only because when I start to rotate this, um, part of this is going to you know, be outside the camera view because uh, camera view is going to be wider than it is uh, tall, let's say. So I can even move the camera too. So if I'm on the side, I can take photographs this way um, or I can just rotate until this point. And the other thing that a lot of people don't do or they forget is that you can rotate the camera 90 degrees. So if the object um, fits better in portrait versus landscape mode, go ahead and just rotate the camera. Photogrammetry software doesn't care, it just cares that you have a good photograph of that particular image. So uh, when I'm rotating around, if I'm going to have the uh, camera kind of pointed this way, then I'll use sort of like a landscape kind of this way and then otherwise when I get to this particular uh, direction or that perspective then what I'm going to do is I may rotate the camera up. So it's going to take quite a bit of work to uh, manipulate the camera and that sort of thing but that's okay. I have a bit of time and it's not a big deal. Now in terms of a turntable I have this one right here and this is one I just picked up on Amazon and you'll notice that one side is black and the other side is white. Now, I actually painted this so that I could have the option. So if I have an op uh, I don't know, a part or whatever that's dark and I want a white background, then I can just turn it on this side. Otherwise, I'll just flip it over and I can use this side. Now, I haven't really decided which side would be better. So I have to think about that. If I put this on this side, on the white side, that might work because there isn't a lot of really, really white uh, paint or white texture on this particular model. So that um, could potentially work. Um, but I'm thinking black could be okay too. Uh, it just maybe where these fine uh, little parts are up on the top that could potentially cause a small issue. I don't know. So I think I'll start with the white and I'll see how that goes. And then from there, um, you know, we'll see how that progresses. I can always come back and just take more photos the other way. So. Let's start taking photographs and set this all up. Okay, so we're going to be taking photographs now. And so a couple of things I need to consider. One is the camera, one is the object and the setup and everything else. So uh, first thing, um, you know, I talked about some of the complexities with doing this. I thought about it and I think all I'm going to do, uh, because I'm just really going to be focusing on the masking part today, is I'll take a round of shots from the top here on the turntable and then I'm going to flip it upside down and then I'll take a round of shots from the bottom and that should pretty much do it. I shouldn't need to actually flip it on its side or that sort of thing and so that'll just simplify things and keep it most efficient. Um, with respect to the camera, I've talked about some of the camera settings. Uh, ISO, I'm going to keep down very low but ISO 100 and the um, f-stop number I'm going to raise high so uh, I'm going to have f22 or f25 and by doing that, I'm going to basically let in very little light, okay? So the orifice or the opening um, is going to be small. So as a result, I'm going to need a longer shutter speed. So right now, my shutter speed is about two seconds or so. I'm going to play with it a bit just to make sure that it's okay. I don't want it uh, too bright or too dark, kind of in between where I can pick up all the details quite nicely. And like I said, I'll start from here and I'll just rotate this in about 10 or 15 degree increments all the way around, making sure that I get good overlap. And once I do that, I'll take the model, I'll flip it and then run it again. So I'm going to get started taking photos here. Let's go. All right, let's do a quick test here. Just going to make sure that this is in view as it goes around. It's not too bad, but I need to get uh, either a little bit closer or a little bit higher like that and that does most of what I need around the top okay good and then I can just flip it now I will be using a remote and uh, this is really helpful so I avoid any shaking or anything like that if I was to use this by hand I'm going to have to change my settings so I'm going to need a shutter speed of at least 1 80th of a second to ensure that they're nice and crisp and so that's one of the limitations of um, you know, holding things by hand. You can't have an ex extended shutter. Now, just looking at this, so my settings right now, it looks like I'm at about, uh, uh, well, a third of a second maybe, and F25. And it looks like it's right on in terms of exposure, maybe a little bit underexposed. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take a practice shot, but first I'm gonna enable uh, my, uh, my uh, remote here. So give me a second. Make sure that's on so I can do this and almost there. 
remote control. There we go. And I'm going to have a quick mode here. So let's see what this looks like. Yeah, so that doesn't, doesn't look too bad. Uh, in the viewport there, I can see or on the LCD, it looks pretty good. So I'm going to take that first one. I'm going to move it, move it a few degrees, take another picture. And like I said, I'm not going to trouble myself too much with this model in terms of all the fine details. I really want to focus in on the masking. And, um, you know, by doing just the top and the bottom, I'm really doing this in the most efficient manner possible. Can you add more photos later? Absolutely. Can you take more photos now? Absolutely. Um, if you really, really want to, you know, beat this thing up to, into the ground, um, you can just take all kinds of photos, get in close to all the little details. I just want to create a nice overall uh, model um, just so that I can show you how we remove the background. Okay, that's done there. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna flip this upside down like that and see if it'll stay. Yeah, something might lean up. Yeah, it'll lean over a little bit. Let's see what that looks like. And let me rotate it around. Yeah, I pretty much get everything there. That should be okay. So. I might have to take a few other overalls after, but let's go from here and see what we get. Okay, uh, probably what I'll do is just take a few extra little photos just in case, but that's pretty much it. Um, in fact, I'll probably just process these and see what they look like. And so let's go up to the computer. Uh, we're going to just do a quick check on the images, make sure they all sort of come together pretty well, or at least I have enough images. And then what I'm going to do is I'll show you how the masking works, and then I'll just continue on and create a final model. So let's head over. Okay, so we're at the computer now, and what I want to do before I do anything is just check the images to make sure that they are somewhat okay. So I'm looking here, you know, not too bad. And they look, you know, you can see the turntable, you can see I cut off part of it, part of it will come back when we flip. And here we go. So we flip this, so you'll see that other stuff will uh, come into view. And so we should be able to reconstruct this. So uh, not too bad. I am okay with the images there. The other thing that I'm going to do just to try is I'm going to bring these in and I'm just going to do the sparse reconstruction just to make sure that, you know, they're going to connect it even like this. Now, there's going to be some issues with these particular uh, types of photos when the back, there's a lot of background showing and that sort of thing. So what I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to make sure that I choose close range, but I'm going to also choose deep for the preset. Normally, I would just use default. If I wasn't using a turntable and I didn't have a lot of background, I would just choose the default. I'm just going to check and I'm going to go next and I'm going to go run. And what this is going to do is just see if I can get most of the photos oriented, because if there's a problem, I don't want to go through all the trouble of masking and then go back and have to retake all the photos and mask again. So this will tell me something about the images that I have. And since I flipped the model on the turntable, what I'm going to expect to see is part of the turntable being reconstructed. So there'll be like a flat ground or flat bottom uh, set of points underneath the trolley. And then when I flipped it upside down, there was the turntable, which is really on the top now. So I should see two little kind of sets of points or planes, which are on the top and on the bottom of the trolley. If I get that, and if most of the photos reconstruct, then I'm in good shape and I'll jump into the masking and then kind of go from there. Okay, so right off the bat, I can see I got a bunch of photos that uh, were correctly oriented. That's great. And if I zoom out, you'll see I've got these rings that I did. And look at the model. This, this is interesting. You'll see that I have, you can just make out the wheels here. I've got the base of the, uh, the turntable, but I also have it on the top here. And because the, you know, again, let me go back upside down, right? When it was upside down, it was kind of sitting on an angle. So you can see how the turntable is being reconstructed here as well. So 
that's a good sign. Uh, that's a good start. That means that I've got something that I can use. Now, I'm not going to save this because I know that it works here. So what I'm going to do is um, just restart a new project and then uh, start the masking and I'll show you some different things there. So let's switch over. So when it comes to masking, there are three basic ways that you can do this. And they're um, basically down at the bottom here. But one is just manually. Okay, so you can go through the whole thing. Um, and uh, just, you know, on this image here, there's a couple of brushes. The first one is I use red to tell me uh, or tell the software what I want to keep. And then I choose blue to tell it what I want to get rid of. So I want to get rid of the background in this case. And what it'll do is it'll automatically compute. And um, if I look at this black and white mask, you'll see uh, white is what it keeps, black is what it's going to get rid of. And there's little things here that I need to keep. Oop, that's the wrong one. I want to go back to red. I want to keep that. I want to keep this. I want to keep the step back here. I want to keep this headlight at the front. So little by little, you can start to tweak this and, you know, keep certain things and get rid of other things. So you can see the little space in here. Uh, I can get rid of. Now I'm just holding on the shift key. So when the red uh, brush is enabled, then uh, if you hit shift, it actually turns to blue. So it's a shortcut key. All these little gaps I could clean up. Of course, this is time consuming, right? This is going to take quite a bit of time. So uh, I'd have to go through each image little by little and then kind of go from there. Um, so that's not something that I probably want to do. Um, now there is this turntable mode. So if I tell it, Hey, this is going to, this is on a turntable and I'm slowly turning this around. Um, what I can do is have it automatically compute and I can do this with or without the turntable enabled. So, but if I hit this automatic compute, I'm going to do that now. Uh, what it's going to do is use the first mask that I did. And you'll see that as it's running through here, it's creating all the masks for the subsequent images. So that's really helpful because it does a bulk of the work for me. Now, it's not perfect. It's not going to isolate every little single feature. And in some cases, I may have to tweak it. But if uh, depending on your setup, this may work really, really well. Now, you can also create masks externally. So you can do this in Photoshop, create a, a black and white image and basically uh, use that as your mask if you want. I'm not going to be showing that. Um, there's even another feature here at the bottom that is a color picker, basically. So you can just uh, select this button, choose your background. And then, um, you know, once it does that, you can just tell it to go ahead and automatically get rid of all the white or lighter portions of the background. So there's a few options here, uh, manual, um, automated or semi-automated tools, and then even external like with Photoshop or other image editing programs. So let's just process this. And when I'm done, I'm just going to close this. I had all the masks. I refresh and you'll see that it loads all of the masks here. No problem. I'm going to go next and next again, close range deep. I'm going to keep that on. I'm going to go next and I'm going to go run. And what I'm going to do is pause it here. Once it's done, I'm going to come back and I'll show you what it's got for the sparse reconstruction. All right, so we're back. And if I scroll through all the images, it looks like they've all been reconstructed now. So I'll go finish and you look at my model. I have much, much less of the, um, you know, the background and such. It's just gotten rid of it all. So that's not too bad. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to continue on and I'm going to create a deep or a dense point cloud from this particular model. I'm just going to go close range and default now that it's all reconstructed. And when that's complete, again, I'll come back and then I'll let you see what that looks like. Um, but I think after that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back down, shoot another round of images with the black part of the turntable and see how that might help us. All right. So the dense point cloud doesn't look too bad. Um, if you look at it here, it's fairly complete. If you look on the bottom, okay, we've got the bottom pretty much set up. And uh, let me come back here. What happened? There we go. Uh, but overall, you know, we got a, a half decent model there. So not too bad. Yeah, there's a lot of things we could probably improve. But I'm just going to go ahead and just make a very quick mesh just to see what the mesh is going to look like. If it's going to be anything uh, decent, I'll go to default 
and go next and run. And when that's done, we'll have a quick look. And like I said, after this point, I think I'm going to go back and shoot another set with the black base and see if the contrast is going to help us create a really nice uh, or a better automated mask. All right, so the trolley got reconstructed here. You can see that uh, it's it's not too bad. Um, there's some things that I could do uh, just right off the bat to improve here, but I'm okay with this. Um, in terms of the masking, that was really what I was after anyway. So um, you can see the model. Um, I haven't textured this yet, so there are um, there's some things I can do to improve the colors and even the mesh. There's probably some things I can do with more photos and that sort of thing. But I think you get the idea here and let's go back. I'm going to shoot those other photos with the black part of the turntable and then I want to come back and reprocess and see what I've got. Okay, so we're back again and uh, I'm going to try this one more time with a black, uh, the black side of the turntable and a black background. Now, I didn't have anything really black, like a big black sheet or whatever. So I just had this shirt and I just tucked it up close to the turntable and I just took the camera bag behind it to kind of uh, raise it up a bit. So now when I take my photos, I basically see just uh, all black in the background and that's gonna help. Now I did notice right off the bat, uh, before when I had everything which was white, um, you know, my, sh my exposure was different and so I'm gonna have to adjust that because right now, um, in order to get this properly exposed, uh, I've got about, uh, oh boy, it looks like about a second, maybe a little bit less. So I'm just going to make some adjustments here and I'll check this out. Now I am going to use the remote again and let me just make sure that I can turn this and it's going to get me what I want. Looks like it. So let's try another set of photos like this. Yeah, it looks pretty good. I might even just back up a tiny bit and I'm going to go up a tiny bit higher by pointing this up like that. And this way I'll definitely get a little bit of background and I should be able to separate this quite well. So let's see how this goes. Okay, plenty of photos there, so let's flip this over. And this was leaning a little bit, so just stabilize that. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, I'm just gonna spin it around, see what I get. I think that looks okay. So let's give it a go. Okay, well, that should about do it. So I did two rounds, one with it upright, one with it upside down. Let's go see what it looks like. Okay, so these are the new images that I have and I'm gonna be masking them and trying this again. So I'm gonna go next and I'm gonna go next again and I've gotta to go to masquerade. So it doesn't look too bad. So that could potentially work for me. So I think I'm going to try turntable mode. I'm going to tell it what I want to keep by doing, oh, I went out there. So I'm going to undo that uh, just by hitting control Z and I'm going to hit all of this like that. And uh, maybe what I will do is hit some of this and then I'm going to do the background, which is more or less black like that. Let's see what I get here. So let me check the mask. That's not too bad. So that to me is a big improvement on what we had before because a lot of the bottom here is uh, has been, you know, sort of gotten rid of. Now there is some stuff up here I'm going to want to keep and there's some stuff I'm going to want to get rid of. Now it may not have the intelligence to do all of these little spots, but that's okay. Uh, that's not a problem for me because it may not reconstruct all the little in-between spaces here. The majority of it, it's picked up. Let me see if it's gotten this piece down here. Yeah, that looks like it's okay. So 
I'm going to keep this. I have turntable mode enabled and I'm just going to go ahead and say automatic computation and it's going to do the rest of them for me. And as it's doing this, I'll be able to get just very briefly a snapshot of, uh, you know, where it's masking and where it isn't masking. And when it flashes, I can kind of see what it's doing. It doesn't look too bad, actually. Looks like it's um, behaving kind of properly. But once this is all done, I'm going to come back and review this all and see if it did what I wanted. Okay, so it's gone through all the images. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to have a peek at some of these. Oops, and see how it looks. Oops, let me see here. Okay, so this one here, if I look at that. Okay, so not too bad. It got rid of most of the background, which is fine. If I go back here, yeah, I'll save that. And let's have a look at this. Not too bad. It didn't get the step, but most of the background is gone. It did get this back step. So what I can do is I'll go through some of these and just have a look and make sure that, you know, I'm not missing out on some of the finer details, but most of the work is done for me. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to proceed to turn this into a nice 3D model. All right, so all my masks are done and I'm just going to go ahead and start processing this. Normally, I may do deep mode here just to make sure I get everything. Uh, I don't mind taking the extra time just to make sure that everything gets um, reconstructed properly. So let's let this cook a little bit and then we'll come back and we'll see how the uh, model looks like or at least the sparse point cloud looks like. Okay, so this just finished processing and all of the image is here. All the, yeah, all the images look like they uh, reconstructed. And so it really helps to remove the background. And I found that if I just let it go uh, with the background and without the background, uh, removing the background seems to help a bit. So you can see all the images on the top and on the bottom, very, very well organized, you know, small increments and equidistant from the model. Just a few stray points that are here, not too bad. Um, what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and reconstruct the dense model and, and uh, see what that looks like. So let's go ahead and let's do that. I'm gonna just do close range. I'm just gonna take the default settings and see what that looks like. And we'll come back in a little bit again and see what the dense point cloud looks like. All right, so the dense point cloud is done and it doesn't look too bad. Um, just looking around here. Yeah, the top looks a little uh, different there. I'll have to look at that a bit more closely. But the trolley, the base and that sort of thing doesn't appear too, too bad. And okay, that's all right. It's not as bad as I thought. What I'm going to do is I'll create a mesh and I'll just continue from there. Just a rough mesh to see what it looks like. And um, I'll just stop there. I'm not really interested in going more. The real purpose of this was to be able to use the masking to get a full 360 model and to show you that, you know, it's easy to do. Now, in, the other thing I should mention in this case was I masked all of the images, but you don't have to. So if some of the images are just fine on their own and you're finding that there's issues with, you know, you're doing an outdoor scene and people are walking in front and they're caught in the image or something like that, you can easily just mask them out of one, two, three, four images and those por portions of the images that you've masked will not get reconstructed. So that's a useful tip in case, uh, or for example, if you're texturing in some of the, um, you know, people walking or whatever end up in the textures, you can uh, obviously remove them there as well. So, um, yeah, there's some good, uh, good things you can do with masking. And uh, once this is done, I'll give you a peek at what it looks like. So here's the mesh model. And again, more that I could do here for cleanup, for accuracy and that sort of thing. But I think you get the idea. Um, you know, the camera's nice and organized using the turntable, using the masking and finally getting a full 3D model, top and bottom all complete. That's really what's important here. All right, folks, thank you very much and uh, see you next time on Click3D.